Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Men. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a woman named Harper standing in shock in her apartment. She has a bloody nose. Harper steps forward and closes the glass balcony door. A moment later, a man falls from the top of the apartment building. They lock eyes as he falls past the balcony. Some time later, Harper takes a trip to a quaint countryside village. She gets out of the car and steps inside a lush courtyard with an apple tree. Harper plucks an apple from a branch and takes a delicious bite. She doesn't notice that a man is staring at her through the window of a grand house. Harper knocks on the door and the same man opens it. He introduces himself as Jeffrey, the groundskeeper of the manor where Harper will be staying. Apple still in hand, Harper enters the kitchen while Jeffrey grabs her bags from the car. Joining the kitchen is a beautiful backyard patio overlooking the garden. Harper pours herself a cup of tea. After placing her bags inside her room, Jeffrey comes back. He takes her on a tour of the house, which includes a drawing room, a piano room, and a dining room. The furniture of the house dates back several centuries ago, but the overall atmosphere is very cozy. A set of stairs leads to the master bedroom with a canopy bed. Jeffrey curiously asks where her husband is. Since her booking is under the name of Mrs. Harper doesn't directly answer, but just alludes that she's divorced. With that, Jeffrey concludes the tour and leaves her with the house key and his number. He adds that he just lives in a small cottage nearby. Afterward, Harper sits on the couch and video calls her friend, who's worried about her. A flashback reveals that Harper has asked her husband for a divorce. It turns out he was the man that she saw falling at the beginning of the film. But her husband wouldn't accept it. He threatened to kill himself if she divorces him. He said that it would be tantamount to her killing him herself. To escape that horrible memory, Harper takes a walk in the woods bordering the property. She eventually stumbles upon a dark tunnel in the middle of the forest. She screams into the tunnel to see how far her voice will echo. Eventually, she walks inside and is swallowed by the darkness. Once she's in the middle of the tunnel, she glimpses a figure at the end of it. She gets a terrible feeling as she watches the figure run toward her. Harper quickly turns back the way she came, but she gets lost and finds herself running deeper into the forest. She's confused when she sees that where the tunnel used to be before, there's now a bricked up wall. Instead, Harper climbs up a steep cliff to get back to the other side. She uses small trees as handholds. Harper stumbles upon an abandoned cottage. She snaps a picture with her phone and then realizes that there's a naked man with green-tinged skin standing in front of it. She turns around again and makes her way back to the manor. Another flashback reveals that Harper had gone to the street in front of their apartment building. Her husband had jumped to his death and she saw the horrifying scene of where his body fell. His arm was impaled on a metal fence and his foot was bent the wrong way. The husband made true on his promise that he would kill himself if Harper divorced him, and she has been struggling with the guilt she feels. Once she gets home, she takes a relaxing bath. She sits down at the kitchen table and video calls with her friend again. The friend asks Harper to give her a tour, and she complies, proudly showing all the rooms in the house. She doesn't notice the naked man with the green-tinged skin earlier is outside the kitchen door, looking at her through the glass. The thing is, the naked man's face looks similar to Jeffrey's, except that he is bald and younger. The naked man's face is also filled with bloody scratches. Harper immediately calls the police, and the operator asks her for her address. She sees that the front door is ajar and hurriedly locks it. A split second later, the naked man's hand reaches inside the mail slot. The operator informs Harper that police are on the way. The police arrive and easily apprehend the naked man, who says not a word. The officer assures Harper that he seems to be harmless and must have been a vagrant who was sleeping in the woods. Another memory resurfaces. After she told her husband that she wanted a divorce, Harper texted her friend that he's scaring her. The husband saw this text and got enraged. He punched Harper in the face, which was why she had a bloody nose. To get peace of mind, Harper visits the local village church next. It is empty, so she walks down the rows and notices that the pulpit has the face of a man with leaves engraved on it. The figure is called Green Man, a mythical pagan being that represents rebirth and lust for women. Another flashback reveals that after he punched her, Harper screamed at her husband and made him leave their apartment. She vowed that after the divorce, he would never see her again. She steps out of the church and encounters a young boy wearing a mask. He takes off the mask, and it's shown that he bears a striking resemblance to Jeffrey and the naked man. The boy asks Harper to play hide and seek, but she declines. The vicar of the church appears behind her and tells the annoying boy to go away. The vicar has long gray hair and dark eyebrows, but he also looks like Jeffrey. 
The boy insults Harper and then walks away. The vicar surmises that Harper is in a lot of pain and he offers counsel to her. She confesses that she feels like she's being haunted. She tells the vicar the story of her husband's death and how she isn't really sure if his death was a suicide or an accident. Harper recalls the look her husband gave her when he was falling, as if he was surprised. She thinks that maybe he was just trying to climb into their balcony because she threw him out of their apartment. The vicar insinuates that she drove her husband to death. Harper reels from this because she was expecting the vicar would comfort her. Instead, he adds that it's normal for a man to hit a woman, and if Harper had just accepted his apology, her husband wouldn't be dead now. Harper curses the vicar and leaves. Harper next visits the pub that Jeffrey recommended. She finds him sitting by the counter. There are two other customers, both of them bearing resemblances to Jeffrey. Even the bartender looks like Jeffrey as well. Jeffrey treats her with a pint of beer. One of the police officers who arrested the naked man walks in, and to no surprise, he looks like a younger Jeffrey as well. He informs her that they had to release the naked man because he didn't steal anything or do anything worthy of criminal charge. Jeffrey jokes around and doesn't seem to even take the matter seriously. Harper is taken aback and insists that the naked man is stalking her. The officer reiterates that the naked man is harmless. Harper is just weirded out by how everyone in the village is acting. She leaves the pub and heads back to the manor. She calls her friend again, telling her about the strange behavior. Harper wants to leave, but her friends insist that she will go to the village so they can hang out together and salvage Harper's vacation. After all, this is Harper's time to heal from the death of her husband. She agrees and is about to give her the address, but the call disconnects. She reconnects, trying to say the address again, but the call once again disconnects. Harper sends her location via text message instead, but her friend sends a weird reply, saying that she already knows where she is and calls her the same insult the boy had earlier. The patio lights flicker, and Harper looks out the window. She sees that the cop from the bar is standing in the garden. She steps outside, asking him what's going on. He doesn't reply. The lights turn off again, and when they turn back on, the cop has disappeared. The apples start falling off the apple tree. Then, she sees another Jeffrey lookalike running toward her. Harper manages to get back inside the house and lock the door behind her. She grabs a knife from the kitchen as the man bangs on the door. Suddenly, it's unlocked, and Jeffrey steps inside the house. She tells him that someone has tried to break into the house, but when Jeffrey looks outside, there's no one. Instead, he finds that a crow has broken the window and is now lying on the floor. He takes the crow and kills it by breaking its neck. Jeffrey ventures outside to look for the intruder. Harper follows him and sees that he has already disappeared. Instead, the naked man is standing in front of her. His face now looks like the green man figure on the church pulpit. He blows a fistful of spores at her, and Harper experiences a series of strange visions. She sees her husband falling again, and then she's drowning in a bathtub. In slow motion, she sees the naked man reaching his hand inside the mailbox again. She touches his hand, but she wakes up from the vision and stabs his hand with the kitchen knife. He pulls his arm free and tears it into two, similar to how Harper's husband's arm was impaled on the fence. Harper walks back into the house and sees that the boy is standing in the kitchen. His arm is injured, similarly to the naked man. At this point, Harper understands that Jeffrey, the boy, the vicar, the naked man, and even the green man are all one entity that has been haunting her ever since she came to the village. She points the knife at the boy and locks the kitchen door behind her, pretending that she's playing hide-and-seek with him. But the front door suddenly opens, and the vicar walks inside and chases Harper. She hides in one of the rooms. He appears inside the room, bearing a similar arm injury. He begins to describe Harper as a harlot. He resents her for exuding this power over men. The vicar continues to rationalize that it's only normal for women to tempt men, and it's not his fault that she's driving him to sin. The vicar slowly approaches Harper and grabs the hem of her dress, intending to force his hormones on her. Harper defends herself by sinking her knife into the vicar's belly. She flees the house and gets into the car. But Jeffrey is standing in the middle of the road, and she accidentally runs over him. She stops the vehicle, and Jeffrey wobbles up to her. He opens the door and yanks her out of the driver's seat. Jeffrey throws her on the asphalt before getting into her car and driving off. Suddenly, the road disappears and all Harper can see is the bright night sky flecked with stars. A moment later, Jeffrey returns and chases her with the car. Harper runs away and he ends up crashing the vehicle into a stone wall. The naked man, who has now fully transformed into the green man, appears before Harper. His belly is swollen as if he's pregnant. He opens his legs and lies down on the grass. Slowly, he gives birth to the boy, who emerges from his woo with his teenage body. 
His belly is swollen too. The boy opens his mouth and screams, before collapsing to the ground. He begins to give birth to Jeffrey, who springs from the boy, naked and covered in blood. Harper is shocked by the whole process, just like unveiling the matryoshka dolls. She goes back inside the house, and Jeffrey crawls after her. He is pregnant too, and from his back emerges another Jeffrey lookalike. The last iteration is revealed to be Harper's husband, who claws his way out of the lookalike's mouth. Based on the theory used by the vicar to blame women for tempting the men, it's implied that this endless cycle of men being birthed by other men is a symbol of how toxic masculinity and oppressive ideals are replicated in people. Apparently, those toxic ideals culminated in Harper's husband, who sought to imprison her, and led to his arrogant suicide. When Harper sees her husband reborn, she softens. Finally, she can come face to face with the source of the guilt she has been feeling. She asks him what he wants from her, and he replies that he wants her love. Harper sighs. When morning comes, Harper's friend arrives at the manor. The movie ends with the friend finding Harper alone, sitting on the steps. She is smiling, implying that her final confrontation with her husband has freed her from the guilt. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.